All right. <laughs> so, LaShondra here. And I wanted to come to you with some motivation. Some motivation. So, I'm going to give you a quick update with Go Go Kid. Because you guys haven't given up on Go Go Kid like entirely. But unfortunately, it's just like I haven't really opened up my schedule because if you recall, Go Go Kid. I primarily set that aside for my 1700, which in China time, that would be the 5 p.m., but the popular time is 1800 BJT, you know, Beijing time, but I'm not really getting the bites for a 1700, and so instead of me, you know, just putting, opening my schedule and then putting short notice and waking up early for no reason i just haven't really updated my schedule so i'm going to do an experiment <laughs> i'm going to experiment and i'm going to open up my schedule again i'm going to do it again and then i'm going to open it up for sundays because i've actually been enjoying having my sundays off i haven't worked any sundays in the whole month of april yeah, April. Well, most of April. No, the whole month of April. Yeah, the whole month of April, I took my Sundays off. So I was just like, I'm not working on Sundays. I'm going to sleep in until it's time for church. And I spoiled myself because you guys, I teach seven days a week. So a lot of people ask me, how do you juggle your schedule? Literally, I work seven days a week. So if you're looking for like downtime and days where you just just don't do anything, then, you know, just realistically speaking in this industry in teaching online, if you're really trying to maximize your time and maximize your money making potential, if you're really trying to maximize that, then seven days a week, seeing that you don't really you know, work all day, you're only working two, three hours a day, then seven days a week there. I mean, I think that's a, a wonderful exchange to working eight hours a day, you know, Monday through Friday or whatever, eight hours a day, five days a week and having to commute or, you know, whatever that case may be. So my schedule, the way I have it is I generally before i took a break from go go kid my schedule was 1700 to 1800 go go kid monday through monday through saturday 1700 to 1800 that's just one hour that's two classes one hour two classes six days a week and then on sunday then I was thinking I'll open it up for four hours on Sunday. So 1,700 all the way to 2,100, roughly. 1,700 to maybe, yeah, so it's like 18, 17 to 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, so 1,700 to 2,100, which will be 5 a.m., I mean 5 p.m. China time to 9 p.m. China time. So that's what I'm going to do. And then from 1800 to 2100, 2030, then I'm with WeTalk. Remember, I'm with WeTalk. And I do that Monday through Saturday. I'm with WeTalk for, four, for three hours a day, Monday through Saturday with WeTalk. Then Monday through Friday, I had like a one hour break in there. I've always had that one hour break and that was only because I had to run my kids to school during the school year and then come back and I'm like, Woosa, get me like my coffee ready, get a tall glass, a, a tall thing of water ready. And I jump on Cambly for like three hours, you know, two, three hours. So then I'm on Cambly from, cause you know, I'm, I get off from um, teaching at We Talk 8.30, 9 o'clock roughly. And so then I'm on Cambly, sometimes 930, but from 10 until normally from 10 to one. So 
you know, that's three hours. What? 11, 12, 1. Yeah. 10, 10 a.m. my time to 1 p.m. my time. Then I'm done for the day. So then in a day's time, I'm actually putting in, what, four plus the three. I'm putting in seven hours. So I start early and I'm breaking it up and I'm putting in seven hours. And that's Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday, I'm not doing, I don't do Cambly. I'm just, I'm just like, nope, need a break. So I just crank out my classes early morning and I'm done. I'm done for the day. And on Saturday, if my kids are still asleep, I lay back down. <laughs> I'm like, okay, time for my second round of sleep. And I lay back down on Saturday. That's the day where I kind of get to relax. So I, even though I wake up early to work, I still count it as my off day because I have the rest of the day to relax. And then Sunday the same, but instead of going back to sleep right after I'm done working, when I was doing Sundays, then it was like, all right, time to get dressed and go to church. So then we're at church. So I really didn't have, you know, I really don't have the time to jump on Cambly Sundays anyways. And I don't do nights. So a lot of people ask me, do you do overnights? No, no, I don't. If I do, they're like sporadic, you know, like it's not like a set time. It's just like when I feel like it. And it's normally if I just feel like jumping on, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to be productive today. I've done everything. I'm just in a chatty mood. You guys know I'm surrounded by kids. So if I'm just in a chatty mood and I want to make money while I talk to adults, and I'm just, just, you know, aside from talking to my friends and my sisters and stuff, and I just want to talk to some strangers, <laughs> then I just jump on Cambly maybe for a couple of hours in the evening time, or I'll do Palfish. I'll just go live on Palfish and do like a last minute, hey, I'm live, let's do a reading and then see who pops on. And then anyone on Palfish, anyone that comes to your live events, like especially if you make them free, if you do free live events, like you're having discussion time, say you have a topic out there and you're discussing or you're reading, whatever you want to do, and you're doing it for 15, anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, I recommend if it's just, especially if it's just something like a last minute pop on type thing, do it for 15 minutes. I recommend that. Then that just gets them enough time to pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out, get to know your personality. And then anyone that has came to your live, you'll have teachers, you'll have other teachers that come to see what you're doing. They want to kind of check you out too. But when you go to the profiles and you notice that there are students that have came to your live, then thank them, thank them and offer, you know, hey, we can chat sometime. I would love to get to know you better and we can discuss and practice English on a topic of your choice. That's a really good way to advertise yourself on Palfish. I haven't been on Palfish like that in months. <laughs> months. I did a video, what, a few weeks ago saying that I was going to do green eggs and ham. And then the Wi-Fi has been atrocious just atrocious. I've tested it out and it was like choppy. And I was like, I'm not going to get a bad reputation because in the evening time, I don't know, I guess the whole neighborhood was watching Netflix or something. I don't know. So like late afternoon, all the way through the evening, then I was having these periods where the Wi-Fi would drag. Like I can watch a movie just fine. But if I was online, oh my gosh. It was a nightmare. It was terrible being online. And so I've held off. But I've noticed, I don't know, I guess since the city has opened up more, which I'm not ready. So we're still in the house. We're, we're still in the house doing our thing because until the numbers stop climbing, I'm not about to go out there all willy-nilly just hey, how's everyone doing? I mean, we still go with our mask on or whatever. I think since the city has opened up more, then the Wi-Fi is a little more available. So I am going to do that live event where I'm doing the green eggs and ham reading. And I'm going to open it up for children. 
obviously. I don't know any adults. Oh, I mean, actually, there might be some adults like beginners that just want to see how well they understand. But I was thinking of actually having green eggs, not the ham, because I don't have ham. Not that I don't eat ham. I mean, I rarely eat ham. I don't have anything against ham, but I rarely eat ham because it's so salty. It's not really all that great for you. <laughs> so I rarely eat it. And so I don't have any in my house. And um, I don't care for bacon. So I don't have bacon either. But the eggs, yes. So I was going to prepare some green eggs and have that and have my puppet and then have the book. And oh, you guys, I have it all planned out. So when I do it, I will be sure to record it for you guys. But that's just a breakdown of my schedule. Just how I really juggle things. Now, that's just my teaching schedule. You guys, I have a small business writing books. I am venturing out doing private tutoring. And for that, my target audience are the homeschooled kids. Right now, things have been really slow because of the economy. You know, people don't really have the money and people don't know when they're going to get money next. And a lot of the kids are a little burnt out because they were thrown into learning online. And now they're just like, okay, the school year is over. I want a break. So over the summer, I'm actually writing um, a summer camp uh, lesson like, you know, like a summer camp thing where every week there's going to be a theme. There's going to be a theme and I'm going to have classes open for different age groups that have to do with that theme. It's exciting. So I'm working on that now and I hope to have that ready by June. And then I'm going to start pumping it out there and really promoting myself even harder. But these last this last week of May, I re I've really been getting out there and promoting myself. So you guys, teaching online has been so much more appreciated and it is blowing up. There are teachers out there that after doing this, you know, some teachers were like, this is terrible. I can't wait to get back into the brick and mortar. And then there are a lot of teachers, you guys, that are saying, wow, I don't see myself ever going back. So there are a lot of teachers that are actually trying to switch to teaching online. And they could be even the homeschool programs such as, I can't even think of one off the top of my head. K K-12, I think K-12 is one that's big in the United States. I can't think of all the different homeschool, like learning online programs for kids, but there are teachers that are even applying for that. They're like, oh my gosh, I want to be like a homeschool teacher, like an online teacher. So I'm going to apply at those type of platforms. But then everything is slow right now because, you know, the economy is dragging a little bit. But you guys, now that you guys know my schedule, you had like a little update with GoGo Kid. I haven't really done anything with it, but I'm going to do an experiment and I'm going to open up my schedule for GoGo Kid again and see how that goes. And I'm going to keep you guys on my journey with my what I'm doing for my private tutoring. And you you guys know most people like I've been frequent frequenting other YouTube channels, other YouTubers that do private tutoring. And most of them are very vague and you have to pay. Like they're very vague. Like you can do it, use this platform, but then they don't tell you really how to do it. They don't really tell you like how they're doing it. They don't really teach you like the lesson planning portion of it. So just by you guys supporting my channel, that really helps me out. And I want to really help you guys out, be successful, and show you guys how I do lesson planning. Because a lot of people are saying, I don't know the first thing, the first thing about writing a curriculum. And you guys will know that it's, I'm not going to say it's a piece of cake because it does take 
a lot of work and in some instances depending on what you're trying to teach if you want to stick to reading english or whatever then you still might have to do some research because i forgot certain i'm like what is what is a gerund what is that <laughs> i had to like refresh my memory on certain things and i'm like because i didn't major in english when i was in college or anything i've always been good at writing i've been i was you know a very good student straight a's but i didn't major in every aspect of the english language like what uh what what language the root word has derived from and how to be able to tell i don't know i look it up i look it up so i say this because I don't want you getting discouraged thinking you have to be like a world scholar. Like you have to know everything there is to know about the English language to be able to teach it. If you know how to speak it correctly, if you know how to speak accurate, correct English and you have accurate and correct pronunciation, the little rules here and there, you can look it up. And anytime a student asks me something like in the middle of class and they catch me off guard, I tell them, I'll be like, hmm, that's a little difficult for me to explain in my own words. So let's look it up together. So there are certain things that have changed since we've been in school. So it's important to refresh yourself. I say all this just so that you're confident in knowing you don't have to be like a master English professor to teach English. You guys, I am going to continue posting videos on my classes that I teach with, you know, whatever different platforms I'm on. We talk, Cambly, um, Go Go Kid when I start opening up my schedule. Palfish when I do live events. Um, even when I, if I have free talk, I can do a screen record on my phone and then let you guys kind of see what that looks like because that's all in your phone. Palfish is set up to be, it's an app. So you use your iPad or you use your phone. That's it. You don't use a laptop or a, a desktop computer. It's an actual Android or Apple app. And so you just use your phone for it. Really simple. So most of my free talk students that I get, they don't even want video on. They'll have their video off. So if I want them to see me, I'll turn my video on so that they can see me, but I can't see them if they don't turn their video on. Or we both just chat with no video. So I'm going to, when I get my next free talk, you guys, I'm make some time for this. When I do, do, do when I get my next free talk, then I'm going to do a screen record so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. How is it like? You know, how does that work? And on top of, you know, with my private tutoring and me tutoring on other platforms, yes, I have launched my business. It's an online boutique where I actually design my own t-shirts. You guys know like um, Teesprings, Printful, those type of print-on-demand companies where you make the design and people order and whatever your design, you know, hoodies, t-shirts, tank tops, caps, whatever you design whatever design you put on there, they print on, they print by demand, print on demand and ship it out for you. They do all of that for you. So you don't have to have inventory sitting in your house. I have all types of t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies. I'm always coming up with new designs. I discontinue old ones and come up with new ones. I might bring old ones back. And I'm coming up with a, a teacher line. I haven't really had a teacher line. Most of mine have been motivational like motivational phrases or wording but i would like one for teachers you know like i think a lot of times teachers are underappreciated because where would these people be people who have these i mean any job they had to be taught by somebody right they didn't teach themselves most of them i i, I don't know maybe somebody did go to a library get a book and they just completely educated themselves but for the most part they had to get an education from a teacher mentor, 
right? A teacher, a mentor, something of the sort. So teachers are very important. And I think a lot of times teachers are overlooked and undervalued and underappreciated. But COVID-19 really opened up some people's eyes to really understand what it is teachers do, whether you teach online or whether you teach in the brick and mortar. Brick and mortar teachers, I, I know that was my world. I walked away from that world. <laughs> in 2017, I said, I need a break from these bricks and these mortars. <laughs> so I still do my business and I still write books. My ebook is coming to a close. It's coming to a close. Now what's taking me so long now is the ebook part is written, but I wanted to include some resources for teachers. So it's the inclusion of the resources that is taking a little bit longer than I had projected because I have to balance work, my kids, and keeping my house clean. I can't stand it when everything is all tore up. And then my oldest daughter said she was moving in, she was moving back in, then she said she's not. And then because of COVID-19 and her and her friends don't have jobs anymore, now the plan for all of them to get their own place is not happening. So now she's back to mom. Can you clean out the back room? Because I'm coming back. So now, once again, I have to move my office. And I'm going to have to, like, I had this big old room just to myself. So it doubled as my teaching office on one side of the room. Like this side that you guys see was my teaching office. Then the other side, I had inventory, shelves and stuff. And I actually sit at a long one of those long white you know folding tables to where this side of the folding table of my long white table is teaching stuff and then this side i actually have a sewing machine over here i have a sewing machine and um that's when i do like my mixing with i because i do i make body lotions body oils lip products like these like lip oils lip creams that, that are in a pot, lip creams in a tube, squeeze tube, um, like a chapstick type tube. I do all of that. Body sprays, rose water, facial spritz. You guys check out my website, check out my website. So now I'm gonna have to be creative and I don't know, I don't know. My house is smaller than my last house because you guys know with the big move I downsized, but I'm just gonna have to be creative with the space that I have because this was like my bonus room that I was using for my business. And now my bonus room is now going to be my oldest daughter's bedroom. So getting that figured out, but I'm doing all of those things. Now, as far as my store goes, that's like full time, all the time, all the time. So when an order is filled, if somebody places an order, I'm like, oh, I have to fill this order. And then if it's early enough in the day, the order goes out same day. If it's late in the evening, the order goes out the next day. So I have to make sure I fill that order in time to go into the mailbox by the next available post office time. The next available shipment time, it's in there. So I'm doing all of that, you guys. So please be patient with me with the ebook. I know I said it was coming out in April. Then I said May 1st, and now we're at the end of May, and I am praying that it's done by June 1st. But it will for sure be done somewhere in June, if not by June 1st, because I'm just wrapping it up. I'm tweaking it. And I am working on two other books as well, because you know, I write books. So I'm working on two other books, and I'm just loving it. And squeezing in time with my family. It sounds like a lot, but you guys, I love it. I love it. I just, I just love it. I, I really can never say I'm bored. I can never say I'm bored. So I'm here for you guys with investing. If you're trying to get into the world of stocks and cryptocurrency, I'm not an expert at it. I'm still, I consider myself a novice, but I've been able to make some money from it. Like I'm not rich yet, obviously. I'm not rich, but I have a really nice return from my practices but use my links because i get free stuff you get free stuff when you use my link and get plugged in to the world of like buying stocks they have cheap ones they have cheap ones that are like 60 cents 20 cents 
you know, if you get into those, like watch to see what the trend is and maybe spend a little and build up with time. Like say you're like, okay, I'm going to buy $10 worth of this stock. I mean, it doesn't have to be, most people, when they think stocks, they think of like rich people in Wall Street. Okay, those are the people that normally do like the day trading, like buy stock, sell stock, buy, sell, buy, sell, same day type stuff. But if you're looking to invest long term, then you, I mean, you don't really have to have much, like $5. You can start off with $5 with, I think, Stash. Stash, which is like a really good beginner's app let you start off with five dollars the bad thing is it's going to cost you one dollar a month so you got to pay one dollar a month some people are like why would i pay a dollar a month when i'm barely investing anything so i mean you got to weigh your options but i think it's better than paying for a broker and at least you get stocks so if you want an ira account then it's three dollars a month so i have my personal stock account and then my retirement account where I put stocks into it and I pay three dollars a month to maintain that and I look at it as you know most banks not I'm not gonna say most but a lot of banks charge a monthly banking fee so I just mentally I'm just like okay it's my banking fee so whatever I get a good enough return that my stocks pay for the three dollars in my return that I get so I'm not really worried about it but what are your options there's stash there's Weeble and there's Robinhood. And I use all three because not all of them have the same stock options. And then there's more advanced ones like Ameritrade and, oh my gosh, there's so many different ones out there. Like if you are trying to, you know, go to the, the, the top <laughs> of the trading chain, then I haven't gotten there yet. I'm still in the, you know, toddler toddler stage i'm gonna say toddler i'm, I'm still a toddler but uh, my goal is to advance to the you know those higher ranks of trading <laughs> but you guys i'm here for you i want to encourage you to be the best you that you can be i'm here to give you advice on starting your own private tutoring i'm going i'm coming up with a video on how to gather your own students, ways that you can look for people for free and not have to pay for these services to get your own clients. Now, it might be slow at first, but once you get, I'm telling you, once you get like three, I'm gonna say three, say you get three and they're pretty much, you know, they know people. They know people by word of mouth. If you tell them, oh, yes, I'm so excited. So, yes, tell your friends. Do you know? It's kind of like if you've ever been to any type of, especially ladies, you know what I'm talking about, like Mary Kay parties or, um, oh, my gosh, all types of parties where they're like, okay, now fill this out. If any friends that you think will be interested, it's the same concept where when you get people, like you get clients and then you kind of ask them, so do you have friends? So just, you know, once you get three, all it takes, I would say three, uno, dos, tres. Once you get three and they have friends, then you can get it going. Offer them discounts. Be like, yes, once I get, if you refer, for every referral you get, you give me, you get X amount of classes for free. Give them some incentive. They're like, then they'll be like, would you sign? They'll probably tell their friends, would you sign up? Because if you sign up, I get free stuff, you get free stuff. So maybe you're telling them that their friend will get one free trial class or whatever, and they will get X amount of classes for free. Now, when you count up your loss from offering free stuff, then you will see that it's going to greatly benefit you because you're going to you're going to start growing, growing, growing. And I want to get to the point. I mean, if I can have that... If I have gotten to that point by the end of 2020 to where my businesses, all of my business ventures, my writing, my personal tutoring, and my online boutique is just so blessed to that, to where that is all I do. Like I'm 100% entrepreneurial mode, not contract, but 100% Lala. I'm telling you, you guys, I'm just 
Um, first of all, I'm going to upload my, uh, I have some We Talk videos that I'm going to upload. I had a Cambly video where I had interviewed with Harry. You remember Harry and Dobie, a teacher on Cambly, and my screen recorder had a glitch. The beginning part had sound and suddenly there's no sound. I was so... <laughs> I almost cried because it was so good. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> no, but I'm telling you, God told me, you know what? While you're doing your screen record recording, then record it on your phone too. So I actually have dual recording. I did the screen recorder and then I also recorded it on my phone. So I had my phone like facing me like this. I'm telling you, I don't always do that. I rarely do that. And God told me to do that that day. <laughs> So it's going to be like this weird voiceover and I'm going to do like a, you know, picture in picture. It, you'll see it. You'll see it. I'm going to upload it anyway because I'm sure you guys want to see Harry again. You guys love him. I love him. Let's end this video, okay? There's so much more to come. I'm excited. I hope you're excited. So for now, TTF. <laughs> in. <laughs>